So in some instances, the best thing to do though is going to be to power sand. Um, typically speaking, I don't do this unless I've got either a really, really broad area that I'm trying to cover, um, or if my grain changes direction a lot within a piece. Um, the best example I can cite for that would be like big picture frames. Like your next assignment is going to be frame making, essentially. Uh, and when that happens, you know, you have a side that comes up this way and a side that meets here. And very obviously, they change direction 90 degrees right at that corner. So if you're hand sanding, it's almost impossible to stop at exactly the right spot to not scratch into the adjacent piece. And it just like, yeah, yeah, mm, sorry, brain, poor little brain, poor sad little brain. So to that end, it helps if you've got something that is essentially without direction when you are sanding. For that, we use what's called a random orbital sander. That is what this guy is right here. It's called that because it spins in two directions. This guy spins this way, but it also spins this way. And what it leaves behind as a result is this pattern of extremely tight little swirls. Um, it's, it never looks as good as just straight up hand sanding. Because regardless of how fine you take this, there's constantly going to be little swirls on, you know, in your wood and on your surface. And that's sad. So for example, I'm refinishing a desk in the other room that I built a decade ago plus. Um, and when I did the desktop, because it's all this really figured cherry, I didn't, I, I hand sanded the whole thing and it sucked, but it made a huge difference because when I put the finish down on top of it, it just, it almost looked like it was 10 feet deep. You know, it's like looking at water. This obscures the, the surface when you do that. So when do I do that? Like I said, when I've got things that come together at, at, at angles, or if I've got something that's gonna be otherwise obscured by the finish I'm gonna put on there. So if I'm gonna paint it, why the hell not? Um, so this, for example, is a basswood mitered frame that I made in demo for you guys' next project. Um, and you can see the grain goes all these different directions, right? Well, not all these perpendicular directions. But if I were to try to hand sand this, I would damage the corners. Because what is more than likely going to happen, because this is basswood, is this is going to get painted and carved. Yay! So it doesn't have to look amazing. What it does have to do is have consistent surfaces all the way around here and look good. Um, so when I am using the random orbital sander, be aware it has a yeah, I'll get back to that in a second. It has a Velcro pad on it, and the the discs themselves are Velcro backed as well. This all by itself is not abrasive. Some people don't know that and actually melt the hooks right off of this, which is very sad. Um, let's see what I got here. The discs also come in um, eight hole and five hole, right? But this obviously is an eight hole sander. It's okay if you use the five hole discs on this, just make sure you're lining up at least one of the holes. If you don't, it'll overheat and it'll actually melt the adhesive off the back of the disc and it'll go flying. So, nice little pat, pat, pat. Um, the other thing too is that this is gonna generate a ton of sawdust. A ton of sawdust. You can take the, the filter off the back end of it. This is the one that fits on here and hook it up to this vacuum cleaner. Only this one. This guy is the Orange Fine, F-E-I-N. 
And it's got this really awesome plug on the front end of it. What it does is you can plug your sander or whatever directly into the vacuum cleaner and then set it on automatic instead of manual. And what it'll do is when I turn on my sander, it'll turn on the vacuum. It would help if one of them was plugged in. <laughs> Oh, dear, where are you? Oh, are you plugged in? You're plugged in, you're plugged in. I bet it's on off. Let's try it now. Let's try that again. Come on, you. You are plugged in, right? Here I am thinking it's going to be all awesome. Hmm. That's definitely that. I'm going to try a different outlet. yesterday. <laughs> Truly. What the heck? Okay. Interesting. Regardless, in theory, this should turn on at which point it's going to suck most of the sawdust into the vacuum cleaner. That is an amazing and wonderful thing when that happens. Um, I'm just going to see if it's the vacuum or the sander. Anyway, what I would do then is I would just let this float over the top. It's really important for you to understand that you are not shaping with the sanders. You are refining a surface with the sanders. Write that down. By the time you get to the point of sanding, you are no longer shaping your surfaces. You're making them smoother. The reason that's important here is because people tend to really, like, wail on these things. Like, oh, I want to round my corners, and so they sit there and do this kind of nonsense and push really hard on the edge. All it does is destroy the pad. Please don't. Just let the thing do the job. You don't have to push too hard. You just got to be patient. Just move it around. Let it do its thing. There are any number also of discs at every conceivable grit, probably in this bag. Doesn't mean they're all good, but if you want to hold off on buying more discs, you're welcome to. If you're like, I can't see what kind it is, hold it up to the light, you'll be able to see a little bit better. When you're done with your sanding, make sure you take your discs and your sander, mostly your sander, and bring them over to the compressor. I don't know if you guys are aware that this is a thing, but we have an air compressor, the one that makes a lot of scary noise in the wood room. In order to turn it on, take the orange handle here, and turn it from cutting across the line to being in line with the line. That's gonna be the, the case, incidentally, with all gas lines. 
air, gas, whatever. This is off, that's on. And you can hear it. And here, there's no dude. But when you're done with the machine, clean it out. I see someone also very wisely wrote 80 grit in marker on the back of this so that they don't have to hold it up and try to see. But by blowing out the back, it actually increases the lifespan of this by kind of refluffing up the Velcro.